car and driver, you'd already worked for two automakers before the Second World War began, Norman Dewis, my father died when I was 14. I was living with my grandparents and I needed to get a job. Their house was right opposite the main gate for Hummer in Coventry. I worked there for eight months, but they wouldn't give me an apprenticeship, so I went to Armstrong Sidley, who did. I was there three years, then the war broke out, and I joined the RAF, flying in Blenheims. How did you get to Jaguar? I finished the war as an aircraft inspector and went to work for Lee Francis, lovely cars they were. Then in October 51, I got a call from Bill Haynes, Jaguar's chief engineer, who wanted a test driver and had heard about me. I said I'm happy, but went for a chat. At the end he said, what would persuade you to come? I said two pounds extra a month, which was a lot of money then. He agreed, but said I couldn't tell any of the other lads because there would be a mutiny. You helped develop the disc brake. How did you test that? We were doing it with Dunlop, but it was all secret. We got it to a decent standard, but needed to prove it's racing. We didn't want to start at Le Mans, so we looked at the calendar and saw the Mill Miglia. We got Sterling Moss to drive in the C-Type. It was his first time there. He said he'd do it if I was his co-driver. How was that? I had maps, but I didn't need them. In those days, you just went between two crowds of people pretty much the whole way. The Italians were just crazy for speed, as you went by, they'd reach out and bang on top of your helmet. We were within 100 miles of the finish when we crashed. How did you get on with Jaguar founder Sir William Lyons? He was very strict, very upright. He never called anybody by their first name. He was tight with money, but it was his business. I remember sitting in my office one night, I was staying late and working on some figures. He put his head in, do us. Come out here. I walked into the shop and he pointed at the lights. Everyone else had gone home and the lights were all still on. He was furious I hadn't got up to turn them off. Did you feel like a high-speed pioneer in those Jaguars? I imagine I've still got the record on the Mirabank circuit. They checked the hours I spent there once and reckoned I'd done more than a quarter of a million miles at over 100 miles per hour. You also set a road record of 172.4 miles per hour on the Belgian auto route. Was that terrifying? The Jaguar dealer in Belgium, Madame Bourgeois, had arranged to have a five-mile stretch of road closed and we went there several times. We had an XK120, a canopy from the glider, an air duct from the offside headlamp to the carbs, and all the tread buffed off the tires, which we blew up to 50 psi. There was no room for the seat, so I sat on a sack. You got on with it, we didn't think of the risks. You were at Le Mans in 1955, your only works race drive, but you also witnessed the biggest motorsports disaster of all time the crash that killed Pierre Leveau and 83 spectators. I was always the reserve driver. People had asked Sir William why he didn't put me on the team because I was quick. The old man said, I know he is, but if something happens to him, who will do the testing? I was standing in the pits waiting for the driver change when it happened. It was a terrible crash. Terrible. Until then, nobody had taken safety seriously. You had some scares too. What was your biggest crash? The biggest was in the XJ13. I went off doing 147 miles per hour in that. The car had been built to go to Le Mans, but then went into storage. In 1971, we were going to launch the Series 3 E Type with the V12, so we brought out the 13 for a promotional film because it also had a V12. I was doing some fast laps on the mirror banking when the car lurched and started to spin. I had time to switch it off and get down in the passenger well, which was an advantage of being small because there were no belts. The crash took both ends off and the car barrel rolled but ended up with the cockpit facing up. The outside rear wheel had collapsed. It was magnesium alloy. Did you ever consider switching allegiance? Jaguar's been my whole life, really. In 1954, Enzo Ferrari came into the pits at Le Mans and had a chat with me. He offered me a job and I came back from the race and said to the wife I'd been given a chance to go to Italy there was accommodation and it would have been good money. She said, Norman, you go if you want, but I'm staying here with the children. Well, I wasn't going without her, so I turned it down. But I think sometimes about what would have happened if I'd taken it. I think it would have been interesting.